This episode of This Printed Thing is sponsored by PCBWay. Do you have an idea that requires electronic parts? Let PCBWay help you design and prototype your PCBs. They also have other useful services available, like CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and 3D printing, just to name a few. Prototype the easy way with PCBWay. Hey YouTube, welcome back to This Printed Thing. My name's Mike. Before we get into the video, I just want to say a great big thank you to all of you who have subscribed to my channel. You guys made the X1 Carbon wiper replacement video so successful with your comments and your likes and all of you subscribing. It has shot my channel up to well over a thousand subscribers and this is going to allow me to do even more content for you guys. So again, thank you guys so much. And now to the reason you guys are here. For years, my wife has wanted a hydroponic tower. Last year, I looked into 3D printing said hydroponic tower and there are a lot of options out there in Maker World, printables.com, Things. There are just a lot of options out there for 3D printing a hydroponic garden. My problem at the time though was that I had an Anycubic Viper and a Prusa Mark 3S Plus and those are the printers that I was using to sustain my Etsy shop. And a hydroponic tower isn't something that you can just print in a few hours. This is something that takes a lot of material and a lot of time. So it was hard for me to just break away from working my Etsy shop to print a hydroponic tower. But now I have four Bamboo Lab X1 carbon printers and I've never been more prepared to do exactly that than I am right now. Now before I do, I know that there are some of you out there with your hands on your keyboards right now ready to type me a scathing message about how this is a very risky thing. I mean, what about the, the nozzle in your 3D printer? What about microplastics in the water of your hydroponic tower that come off of your 3D print? Stop what you're doing. Don't send that message. I know the risks. So here's the thing. The Bamboo X1 Carbon has a hardened steel nozzle. It doesn't have a brass nozzle. So I'm not worried about lead eroding off of the nozzle and getting into the plastics and leaching into the water. As far as microplastics go, guess what? It's the year 2024. There are microplastics everywhere and in everything, including in you probably. I'm gonna be using PETG, which is a material that's not too different from the material that goes into your plastic water bottles. In all seriousness, all that said, I know that there are risks, and to me the risks don't seem too risky. There are ways to mitigate these risks. So last year when I was doing my research, I happened upon this model designed by Brian Lovett, and he has a YouTube channel in which he talks about his design for a hydroponic tower a little bit. And I've watched some of those videos, and he also outlines here on printables.com the things that you need. And I'm mostly gonna be following what he has here. But I wanted to take you on my journey with this hydroponic garden tower. And if I'm successful, great. And if I fail, well, let's just blame Brian. But let's start printing this stuff.
Now that we've got it all printed, I've changed my shirt, I've cut my hair, I've gone on vacation. Anyone who's done any 3D printing knows that big projects like these often are not done in a single day. So that's what's happened here. A lot of time has passed. But anyway, all the parts are printed. Uh, one of the things I did, um, I cut a hole in the top of a bucket and I printed this flange that goes into the hole and used machine screws to hold it in place. So on the on printables.com, the, the listing on printables, there's a YouTube video where he shows a lid for his bucket that he printed in pieces. Well, those files don't exist on the printables listing so i don't know what happened there but um he does include this this ring here this flange so i just cut this hole like i said and print it put it in with machine screws and so um everything will just kind of set into this and you twist it and lock it in place let me show you so I'm here outside my office and I've got all my parts and all the things that I've had to order to make this work. So here's my bucket. Here's the lid that I showed you earlier. This will be the bottom piece. It just goes in, turns, turn a little more and it's locked. Now I haven't snapped the bucket down yet or the, the lid down to the bucket yet because there are some things I have to put inside the bucket. I have A pump and this is the same pump that um, is shown in the video that uh, that is on the printables listing so I know that this is gonna be a pretty powerful pump I figured it's easier to compensate for too much power than trying to make more power so I got the same pump and I've got my rock wool I've got 10 feet of tube I've got my pH balance stuff. And then I've also got ways of testing the water for the pH balance stuff. So basically all the stuff that has been recommended by the, the person who listed this on printables. So before we start setting up our tower and stacking it as tall as we want, uh, we need to get the inside of our bucket set up. So that's going to include putting in this submersible pump. And by the way, I am unboxing this stuff for the first time. Um, we got some attachments here that will go with our pump. Um, I'm assuming, let's see here. So we're going to turn this. This, this is how you control the flow. And we're probably gonna want it pretty close to close, but we'll test that. Uh, burn that bridge when we get to it. Now, obviously, this is an electric pump, so it's gonna require power. In my lid, you'll notice that I did cut two extra holes. These are inch and a half holes. One is gonna be for the power cord and one is going to be so that I can fill it with water without having to take everything apart. Now I could design covers for these holes. In fact, I probably will. Um, and I'll, uh, I haven't done a Shaper 3D video in a while, so I'll show you guys how I do that. It'll be a real simple design. But um, yeah, so we're gonna put this in. We'll have our power cable coming out one of these holes, like a so. And in the top of in the top of this pump is a place to connect one of these fittings. And we have fittings of various sizes for various sizes of tubing. I believe we're gonna want this smaller one, and let's test that here, because this is 
Yeah, this is about the right size. I wonder if there's one smaller. I don't think there is. I think this is the smallest we got. So yeah, this is the one we're gonna use. So we'll want to actually screw this in probably before we attach the hose. So I'm having a little trouble fitting this hose over the this fitting here. Um, this is a 3 8 3 8 inch inner diameter hose, but um, I'm having a really hard time stretching it over this. And again, I basically bought everything that was mentioned um, with the listing on printables, except for this hose is not the same exact hose. It is uh, the same size. But this is only 10 feet as opposed to, I think, 25 feet is what they listed. So I'm going to take this off and I'll show you what else we can do. So the next size up fitting, the hose fits very snugly into, into the, the, the inside of it. And so I'm going to try that. If that doesn't work, I can always go and buy go to the hardware store and just buy a different hose. So I'm gonna go ahead and put our pump down in the bottom of the bucket and I'm gonna go ahead and leave the entire roll of 10 feet of hose in there because this is modular. I can actually stack these pieces and build them as high as I want. So. Speaking of stacking, let's go ahead and get started with that. So first thing we're going to do is run our hose up through the center of this piece. And as I showed you before, we just set it in, turn it, and it locks into place. And I have actually printed this spacer here so that we can kind of keep our levels separated from one another. So we want the hose to go up through all of this. And then I've got another one of these. So we'll go up through the center of that. And then we have this piece here where we'll actually attach the other end of the hose. And this is where the water will come up and go through here, splash and be distributed evenly among all the plants that are gonna be in our, in our different pots here but we need to get this hose pulled down through here. And we'll just kind of let it lay in the bottom of the bucket for now. So right now it's not very tall, but again, I can print more of these and stack them as high as I want to within reason, of course. You don't want it stacked too high. Now, knowing that this pump is very powerful um, and things are gonna get crazy here at the top because of that power, I created, or I, I uh, printed another spacer like this so that the water can come out of here and hit this top and then be distributed evenly through all the, the plants and the root systems. And you'll notice here that I printed one with a, a gray stripe, and this gray stripe is very important. Actually, I just ran out of white pet G and I had plenty of gray, so I just finished it in gray. Now we're gonna put these little 
pots in. They call them Jiffy Pots in the listing. I don't know if that's the official name for them, but each one of these will contain one of our plants. So really at this point, all we have to do is fill it with water. So we'll use this hole to do that and plug it in and try it out. All right, so this is kind of the moment of truth. I have not yet plugged this in or tested anything. So here we go. Well, I gotta say that looks like it's working really, really well. I look in all the Jiffy Pots and I see water flowing through all of them. I lift this. That seems to work perfectly. So I'm happy with it. So obviously the next step would be to put rock wool in all these Jiffy Pots and we actually plant our plants in the rock wool where they grow and the roots will extend down into our watering system. And as excited as I am to do that right now, here's the harsh reality. We are likely going to be moving soon and I can't see wisdom in getting all of this set up just to have to move it. So I'm gonna wait until we have settled into our new home and then I will get this garden tower started and I will make an update video for it. So there you go. It all starts with 3D printing. Obviously this won't be the last video I make about this, but I can't actually start my garden until after we move. Moving sucks enough. I can't imagine trying to also move a live garden full of water and other things. So, in the meantime, I am posting in the description links to all of the products that I've used to support this project. So hopefully that you can get started with your hydroponic tower garden. But that's it for this video. If you find this content in any way, shape or form useful or interesting, I would ask you to consider subscribing and give this video a like. And until next time, go out there, fire up those 3D printers and make something awesome.